What you guys, today we're taking a look at signs your PC has been hacked and how to deal with this particular issue. Now, if you've got a computer that's acting real strange, I'm going to show you some of the things to do to work out whether it has been hacked or not, or whether you've got some sort of malware of backdoor on your system, which is allowing someone to remote access into your PC. The first place to look is in Task Manager. You can go in here and look at the processes to see whether you have any random processes on this system. So I can already see there is something running on this computer. And uh, sometimes this can be a malicious process that is using up a lot of system resources, i.e. your CPU or memory or disk drive. It will start to whir away and you would start noticing some strange behaviors on your computer. You can see there's another one here called Net Support Client Application. This is another sign that we do have a malicious process running on here. So these are the sort of telltale signs that you've got something happening on your computer and you need to investigate further. So now we know we've got a couple of suspicious processes running on this system. I'm going to right click on this process and we can now click on go to details. This will open up another window where we can examine the actual process itself. And this will give us a PID number and we can now investigate this even further. So we can see that the actual program is running on this computer. The status is running here and we do now have a number for the PID, which is 2808. We also have the client 32 here, which is 1864. So we do know that we do have some more information about these two processes. If we go down to the search box now and type CMD and run this as administrator, this will open up a command prompt box, which we can investigate to see whether these have an established connection on our computer and on our network. So we can type netstat and this will give us some useful information about all of the established connections on our computer with the local IP addresses and foreign IP addresses, which is also important. So we're going to be looking for the established uh, connection on our computer so we can investigate further. So let me just run through. And uh, once it's finished doing its net stat of the connections of active connections on this computer, we'll see a big list of them here. Now we're going to look for the foreign address in that list. So we can take note of the foreign address and see whether it's established state where it's connected out. And we can now see uh, a list of them here. So once we've got our information here on the screen, we can investigate a little bit further by now typing netstat space forward slash question mark. And this will give us a bunch of extra switches we can use to investigate some of these uh, IP addresses which are foreign. So let's go ahead and do this now. Netstat space forward slash question mark and push enter. This will give us a list of switches we can use here. The ones we're interested in here is the dash A, which is going to display all the connections and listening ports for that. Next, we're going to do the dash N, which will display addresses and ports and numbers in numerical form. And then we're going to do dash O, which displays all the owning process IDs associated with each of these connections on the computer. So let's go ahead and type this out now. Netstat space dash a N O and we can push enter and this will now break it down into a much more useful list where we can now see the actual IP address, the foreign address, listening uh, state, whether it be listening, established or closed wait. And we can now see the PID for that particular uh, IP, which now gives us a bit more information here. So you can see here an antivirus on my computer. I'm on a virtual machine right now. So my antivirus may be blocking IP addresses that are attacking uh, my computer that are trying to connect and the antivirus is blocking it. And that is why it's important to have a decent antivirus program. You can see they're constantly probing my computer, but my antivirus is blocking the connection. You can see address has been blocked. Now, if the antivirus wasn't blocking this address, you would start seeing it listed in the command prompt here. But I'm not going to allow that connection to go through because I know it's a malicious uh, uh, process because I put it on here myself. Now, a lot of these 
are known as rats, which are known as remote access trojans, which will allow an attacker to remotely control an infected computer just like this one. So you have to be super careful if you're running a system without any sort of antivirus protection. Normally, these rats can also disable your antivirus program and allow access through your firewall. So you have to be super careful. But something like ESET will block a lot of these. And this is why it's important to have something decent on your computer. Now, I can end task here and start to clear this up a little bit. But let me go ahead and we're going to take a look at this one here. Now, sometimes these nasty malicious processes can create services running on your computer. It can do all sorts of stuff. There's tons of different things here. So you can cross reference this with the PID numbers that are listed for those malicious IP addresses that are established to connection on your computer. So once you right click on these, you can end task and try to kill them, but sometimes they just restart up again. Or when you restart the system, they all automatically restart and they can then gain another connection. So you have to remove it and find it on the system. You can also check the digital signature of this particular file. Now, obviously, you're not going to get a process with a number looking like that. They tried to rename them to look normal. You can see here they've actually give this a signature to make it look like it's actually a normal process. And it won't be a number like you're seeing right here. This is so I can identify it a little bit more better. And that number is the actual name of this malicious uh, rat that we have on the system. Now, this is a super dangerous piece of malware because once it gets on the system, it's going to allow the attacker to remote connect to your computer. So it's important that you get rid of it as soon as possible. You can even pull the Ethernet cable out of your computer until you deal with it because they will be able to remote connect to your PC. So check the location of the malware process and see where it's residing on your computer. So go through here and have a look. Sometimes it hides inside app data and there's a local and roaming area here and you'll see them listed inside here. And you want to start thinking about getting them off the system. They can be anywhere on your computer. You can even use Process Explorer from SysInternals to weed out these nasties. You can right click on them and send them into suspend mode and then kill the process tree and delete them once you know where they are. It's also important to check any sort of rogue process on your computer with VirusTotal. With Process Explorer, you can right click on this and enable VirusTotal to scan that process to see whether it's a malicious process. And you'll see here, it's now checking and straight away, I now know that this is 100% a nasty malicious file on the system that is running. And you can see here, we get a load of information right here about this actual file and what it actually is. So now we know this one is a NSIS, a Trojan agent, and it's quite a nasty malicious file and we don't want this on the computer. So you're going to need to remove this. So this is how we can tell that the system is infected. So now we know 100% we have an infection on this computer, and this can be any type of infection. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna be able to remote connect to your computer, but this video, we're talking about people that can remote connect to your PC, and that's why it's important to know what's going on with your computer. And this is a prime example why you shouldn't be downloading any dodgy stuff off the internet, and this is why you need an antivirus in 2023. Now, I've done a check on this other file here. And as you can see, this is a remote admin type file. And it's not a very nice file to have on your system. We class these as rats, as I've said, which are remote access trojans. And you definitely don't want anything like this on your computer. You definitely want to be removing the Ethernet cable from your computer and obviously formatting the PC and getting it back to factory settings. Or if you know what you're doing, remove it manually with malware removal tools and get it off the PC. So you can see here, you can see now we have foreign IP addresses and state, which is established, and PIDs, which we can then cross-reference. And we know what the file is, and we know where it's located, and we now know that it is a malicious file. So this is why you need to deal with this particular problem right away. Now, we know that the drive would be whirring away. We would have possibly 100% network usage, 100% disk usage, 100% CPU usage, or 100% memory usage. Any of these things are pretty common 
with malware. You can check in your firewall settings if you're running a Windows firewall setup and Windows Defender. You can check to see whether there is any allowed applications to be running on your system to allow to go through your firewall. Malware is either going to disable your firewall or your protection on your computer, or it's going to allow an instance to go out and in of your computer. And you will find it in here, and you definitely want to remove these and block it to stop it allowing remote assistance on your PC. And you definitely don't want that happening. So check inside here. It's important that you check here. Now, with a, a proper antivirus program, and I don't class Windows Defender as a proper antivirus program, it's not going to protect you as well as, say, ESET Internet Security or any other type of Internet Security software like Bitdefender or Kaspersky or any of those. You can see that this is actually disabled our antivirus program, which is built onto this system. Now, the ESET one that you're seeing popping up is on my main system. This is on a virtual machine, and it's actually still detecting network activity in the background because they are connected. So I now know that we've got an issue. Next, if you are in, into this sort of stuff, you can check with Wireshark, and we can check the Ethernet uh, real-time network monitoring tool to see what is happening on the network. Now, I've blurred out the IP addresses here. So Wireshark is going to be capturing all the Ethernet uh, activity on that network, and it will be able to display all the, the IP addresses and the source and destination of those which are connecting to your system. These will be the Acker's IP address, which they are using to connect in. And this will clarify that you have nasty uh, remote software on your system. Now, already, once I've enabled the antivirus program again and run scans, it is starting to detect nasty malware on the computer and starting to remove it. It's important that you do an extensive malware scan of your PC. If you're not 100% sure whether this is completely removed, it's important that you back up your data and reinstall Windows to be 100% sure that none of these uh, remote access uh, Trojans are on the system or backdoors are on the system. It could be rootkits. It could be anything like that. And you have to be really, really careful because you don't want these being left on the system undetected. And it's important that you run multiple different tools to remove these to make sure they're gone. You can see I'm getting some sort of issue here. I'm going to take ownership of this area here, which is basically uh, infected. And I'm going to remove this by deleting it. I took ownership of that folder and I'm removing it physically from the computer because Malwarebytes was telling me there was something remote connecting out. So I wanted to get rid of that. Now, that's important that you do all of your scanning on the system and run multiple different tools on the system to make sure it is fully clean. If you're not completely 100% sure, then I would definitely 100% reinstall Windows to be 100% sure that everything is gone. So back up your data and reinstall Windows is probably your best way to be 100% sure that everything is gone. So that's basically how you can know uh, whether your PC has been hacked or whether someone is remote connecting into your PC uh, without you knowing. If you've got really suspicious activity acting on your PC, maybe you've got some sort of pop-ups going on that's telling you that is something is being blocked by your antivirus program, or maybe your system resources are being hogged by some sort of rogue process. And this is sort of telltale signs that you have got something on your PC and it's time to start investigating and removing that from your computer. So if you like this type of content, let me know in the comments section below. I enjoy reading all your comments. It's important to tell the YouTube algorithm that you're enjoying this type of content by giving the video a thumbs up and also leaving a comment. That's also very important. Anyway, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the very next video, or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Have a lovely weekend. And bye for now.